A confrontation ends with a civilian being killed by a police officer. Outrage and protests follow, then calls for accountability. And then it happens again in some other city in the United States. To many, it seems we are stuck in a cycle. It's why activists in communities across the nation are calling for police reform. And it's why when you vote in the May 1st election, you'll have the choice to vote for or against Proposition B. San Antonians approved Texas local government code chapter 174 in 1974, giving the police union the right to collective bargaining. By now, you've probably heard about the effort to repeal that right, but there have been mixed messages leading to confusion for voters. And you realize the problem lies within the contracts and the problem with the contract lies within 174. It's not about accountability, it's about defunding. Repealing 174 would not be tantamount to defunding the police. That is not the way to reform or change bad behavior. But it has come to that because we don't have anything else. So now we have to take your power away because you're using that power as a weapon. In this episode, we're explaining what Proposition B is all about, the arguments for and against it, and what it would and wouldn't accomplish if it passes. KSAT explains. KSAT explains. KSAT explains. KSAT explains. On demand, in-depth perspective. Perspective on stories we bring you in our newscasts throughout the day. We're looking into concerns over voting safety during a pandemic and the battle over mail-in voting. A look at how the protests and demonstrations have played out in our city and an examination of what it means to be black in San Antonio. An issue that you have likely felt the effects of, rising property taxes. The roots of Tejano run deep in South Texas. We examine the cultural impact the music has had in San Antonio. Early voting in the May 1st election begins tomorrow, and this week's episode of Case That Explains is all about one of the most widely debated items on that ballot. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Case That Explains. I'm Myra Arthur. On May 1st, San Antonio voters get to decide on Prop B. A local activist organization called Fix SAPD is behind that proposition. After the killing of George Floyd and the nationwide protests that followed, Fix SAPD circulated a petition, getting enough signatures to put collective bargaining to a vote. They say it's the first step toward keeping bad officers off the force and improving officer accountability. The San Antonio Police Officers Association argues that's not the case. They say Prop B is defunding of police and would dismantle the department. This is a complex, weighty issue, but that's the purpose of this episode, to explain all you need to know before you vote. Let's start with what you'll see on the ballot. This is what Prop B looks like. As is the case with a lot of ballot initiatives, the wording itself is confusing, so let's boil it down. It calls for the repeal of Texas Local Government Code Chapter 174, which allows police unions to collectively bargain while keeping in place the rule that says officers can't strike or stage a lockout. Collective bargaining is a process in which a union and their employer, in this case the city, determine wages, hours, and working conditions for all the employees the union represents, police officers. It's contract negotiations, and right now, it's a major debate. You realize the problem lies within the contracts, and the problem with the contract lies within 174. Uh, so it's you just kind of follow the breadcrumbs and you realize, oh, Bad contracts lead to poor performances by some of these officers. These contracts are set up by certain laws, in this case, state laws, and Prop B allows us to go ahead and change all of those things. The police union contract allows for arbitration. An officer fired by the police chief can have a third party arbitrator determine whether they should get their job back. Fix SAPD believes that fails to hold bad officers accountable. It's not about accountability, it's about defunding. Danny Diaz, the president of SOPOA, disagrees with Fix SAPD's argument. The union believes Prop B is defunding of police, a rally cry that gained national attention in the wake of protests pushing for police reform. 
but Prop B would not affect the budget of SAPD in any way. Still, Diaz argues that defunding would be the ultimate effect because he says doing away with collective bargaining would be doing away with competitive pay and benefits for officers. Currently, there's a little over 600 officers that have 20 years or more on that could just leave or move on to another department um, that has a different uh, or, or a better way of, of achieving their pay and benefits, uh, their, uh, their working hours, their equipment. So why would, if collective bargaining goes away, why does that automatically mean that decent pay and benefits would go away as well? Because we'd be at the uh, at the mercy of the city. So what you see here is it's just you know a scare tactic. It's telling people, hey, this is what's going to happen because we know this word scares people, not because it's an actual conversation about the facts. Of the eight largest cities in Texas, only San Antonio, El Paso, and Corpus Christi use collective bargaining. The union also opposes Prop B by arguing that arbitration has rarely given a bad officer his or her job back after being fired by the chief. Ten times over ten years, the union says. But Fix SAPD says that 70% of SAPD officers fired get their jobs back. So which is true? KSAT crunched the numbers and we can explain. From 2010 to the summer of 2020, there were 71 San Antonio police officer terminations. Some of those cases are still pending. Of that 71, there were 43 in which a fired officer appealed their termination and a decision was made whether to put that officer back on the job. 10 of those officers got their jobs back through arbitration. 20 were brought back by the police chief, which in some case happens because it becomes too expensive for the city to fight to uphold an officer's firing through the arbitration process. That amounts to 69.8% of fired officers being brought back to the force from 2010 to 2020. The union also questions why Fix SAPD is targeting collective bargaining in the first place. If it was just about accountability, then why did that? Why did they not go after Articles 28 and 29 uh, specifically? Because that's what deals in our collective bargaining agreement. That's what deals with our discipline. But we checked with the city, and according to the San Antonio City Attorney, Fix SAPD could not put the contract to a citywide vote. So the process of negotiating that contract is in the group's crosshairs. Everyday civilians couldn't actually interact with the process at all to change the contract to be able to hold officers accountable. And we found that Prop B is the best solution to give San Antonians a voice at the table when it comes to these negotiations and when it comes to creating contracts that actually provide not only transparency to the public, but also greater power to the chief to discipline officers. Let's take a minute to talk about some of what's in the current contract between the police union and the city that deals with discipline. In addition to arbitration, the chief can only discipline officers for up to 180 days from the date of a violation. Some argue that it should be 180 days from the discovery of the alleged misconduct. The police chief can't consider misconduct older than 10 years for drug and alcohol violations and can't consider violent violations older than five years during the disciplinary process. I don't know any employer where that is acceptable and except for in public service as in police and or fire. The city wants all past misconduct to be considered. The current contract also allows officers accused of wrongdoing to get 48 hours notice before speaking with internal investigators. Some of these issues are being discussed between the union and the city as they're negotiating right now. Their current contract is set to expire in September 2021. The union argues they're already talking about possible changes, so why rid them of collective bargaining? How can we be competitive with other cities? Who's gonna to wanna to come work here? Bottom line is we need to be competitive with other cities uh, to keep good people here, to make sure that we have officers here and taking away collective bargaining uh, won't give you that opportunity. Taking away chapter 174 isn't the only goal of Fix SAPD. It's what's on the ballot now, certainly looming over those current contract negotiations. But Fix SAPD is looking to the May election and beyond. 
And of course, this is the first step. We've always talked about, you know, chapter 174, and then we're still collecting petition signatures for chapter 143. 174, then 143. It's local government code, which isn't exactly easy to dissect. So now let's break down chapter 143 to explain just what Fix SAPD is working toward in the end. Here's RJ Marquez. San Antonians adopted Chapter 143 back in 1947. It's a broad law that lays out how a city handles personnel issues. It covers things like hirings, promotions, and benefits. Important to note, it doesn't address officer pay, but it does cover firings and the process used for discipline. But because 143 is in place, even if Chapter 174 is repealed in May, police would still have protections in place. It will be no collective bargaining. Now, I will say this that that will not change um, so the civil service rules and requirements. That is certainly a statute that outlines a lot of terms and conditions of employment, so it would not default to automatically. No rules and no protections. They get lots of protections under that statute. Chapter 143 would mean changes for the city and police union in terms of how they determine officer pay and benefits. No more collective bargaining. So a contract between the city and union mm -hmm. is not required. City staff and the city manager would recommend officer pay and benefits, and the city council would vote whether to approve. As far as hiring, firing, and discipline, think of 143 as a baseline. If a collective bargaining agreement goes away, 143 spells out how to proceed. Trouble is, a lot of those rules are the same or similar to the rules spelled out in the current contract between the city and union. Protections that fix SAPD and its supporters oppose. For example, under 143, a hearing examiner can make a ruling if an officer appeals a termination somewhat similar to arbitration. They make the decision and they, they have the sole authority to overturn a chief's ability to run his department and and that is it's a pretty big deal nowadays. 143 also says only the police chief can view an officer's personnel file, not the media or victims or the general public. And it says the police chief can't suspend an officer for an offense that happened more than 180 days ago, which, as we mentioned just a minute ago, is also in the current contract. There's been many times discipline's been overturned because of the 180 day rule. Which is why Fix SAPD wants chapter 143 to be repealed too. That is their ultimate goal, but organizers say repealing chapter 174 is the first step in this process. Fix SAPD got the more than 20,000 signatures needed to put 174 in front of voters, but repealing 143 requires roughly 80,000 signatures collected in 180 days. To my knowledge, no city has been successful in repealing civil service under this standard that this legislature adopted. 143 is like the Hotel California. You can check out anytime you like, you know, but you can never leave. I mean, you can't, you can't get out of it. But first things first for San Antonio voters. If collective bargaining is repealed in May and Chapter 143 kicks in, the police union and the city could still negotiate a contract under what's called meet and confer. Think of it kind of like collective bargaining light. It can still bring both sides to the negotiating table, but they don't have to if they don't want to. In the absence of 174, the ma management generally has more power to control the terms and conditions of employment. The union has to agree to meet and confer and petition the city. If 174 were repealed, it would be up to the association to bring forward a petition signed by a majority of the affected officers to the council. And then the city council has to approve it or they could let voters decide. Fix SAPD supports meet and confer and points to the city of Austin as an example. And you actually see in Austin, they actually have better pay, better benefits, and they have a meet and confer system. So we see that under meet and confer, police are still able to get great benefits, great wages. They're still able to have great working conditions. We still can attract great officers to the city as they do. But Sapoa disagrees. Austin is one of those cities that chose to defund their department. And look what's going on there. There's multiple articles, not just Austin, but other cities who have defunded. And they are losing their officers. They cannot keep their officers. They cannot get new officers there. Not only that, but their crime rates are skyrocketing. Their homicide rates alone are exceeding the national average. That claim from a Sapoa representative during the Bearfax case at San Antonio report debate on Prop B is just one of several being made in this conversation that needs some clarification. Garrett Berger takes a closer look. We looked at a Texas Tribune analysis of violent crime rates in four of the biggest cities in Texas, including Austin and San Antonio from 2008 to 2018. No city's crime rate skyrocketed. 
The city of Austin has used a meet and confer system for more than 20 years. As far as defunding, the Austin City Council did vote last year to cut the police department budget by roughly a third. But Proposition B, repealing 174, would not affect the budget for SAPD. Another claim that's been tossed around quite a bit, Fix SAPD has repeatedly said the repeal of Chapter 174 allows for more civilian oversight on officer discipline and benefits. And that's a little murky. The union and the city agree to a meet and confer system and come up with a contract. Fix SAPD says voters could change a contract by collecting enough signatures to put the issue on a ballot. So civilian oversight isn't a given if collective bargaining goes away. Right now, the city and police union contract does include a citizen's advisory review board, which makes recommendations on officer discipline. Earlier in the show, you heard the union president say that repealing collective bargaining could result in San Antonio police officers losing competitive pay and benefits. So is there any proof that would happen? According to the Austin police union president, not necessarily. The San Antonio Express News quoted him as saying that APD has done well under a meet and confer system. According to the paper, salaries have gone up 90% at Austin police under that system. Here's a look at where San Antonio is right now. The city recently hired a consulting firm to do an analysis of compensation across eight major Texas cities, including San Antonio. The base pay for San Antonio police officers is $56,472 for fiscal year 2021. For Austin, it's $61,662. We should note the cost of living is higher in Austin. The analysis found that San Antonio police officer pay ranks above the median compared to the group of cities surveyed. The city of San Antonio's average contribution for dental and vision is among the highest. Another perk San Antonio police officers have that other cities surveyed don't, the city contributes $384 a year for prepaid legal services. Overall, the study found that San Antonio ranked second out of the eight cities studied. Austin's police department was number one. There are two things that fix SAPD and police union representatives can't agree on. Neither wants bad officers on the force and that those officers are a small fraction of the qualified first responders serving our city. We hope we've cleared up some confusion about this debate and given you the information you need to decide how you will vote on Prop B in May. We'll be watching to see what happens. I'm Myra Arthur. We'll see you next time.